During Wednesday night's third Republican debate, South Carolina Senator and the only black candidate, Tim Scott, bragged about how the party is winning back black and Hispanic voters. See the combination of the three. Ambassador, thank Truth you. of my life destroys the lies of the radical left. We need a president and a candidate who will actually help our base solidify and attract independent voters into our party. The Great Opportunity Party is now winning back African-American voters and Hispanic voters because we are working on a foundation based on faith. Our nation is facing some deep challenges. It is the loss of faith in this nation that is a part of the erosion that we're seeing every single day. It's restoring faith, restoring our Christian values that will help this nation once again become the city on the hill. When Ronald Reagan talked about the city on the hill, he was coming from Matthew 5. When President Lincoln talked about a house divided, that was Mark. Our founding documents speak to the importance of a faith foundation. You don't have to be a Christian for America to work for you, but America does not work without a faith-filled Judeo-Christian foundation. I would be the president that helps us restore faith in God, faith in each other, and faith in our future. Without that focus, none of the issues, the policies matter. We have to get back to being a nation that is, in fact, the city on the hill that believes in each other enough for us to fight Scott, for that future. You. Senator Scott. I want to bring in my panel to get their thoughts on what Tim Scott said. Dr. Carr, I saw you alternating between laughing and shaking your head. What you got to say about 2% polling and Tim <laughs> and how he's winning over why, the black why, vote? Why you do that to me, sis? I mean, you know, if Tim Scott weren't so damn cowardly, Mm. It wasn't such a punk on things like the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, lying to the family of George Floyd and to all of us. If he wasn't such a punk, I, I may have more sympathy for him because, I mean, you know, he's struggling to overcome his challenges, challenges of articulation, challenges of nervousness, of nervousness. challenges of uh, finding some... Uh, I'm glad this, the actor strike is over so that he could produce a girlfriend last night. <laughs> Mama and everybody else came to stage and then, you know, grab her lightly around the waist. Got to be careful. Ooh. But, you know, that has to be careful because, you know, they're not going to love you, son. Mm. You can quote the Bible. You can battering ram theocracy. This is not a theocracy. At least we hope it won't become one. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you saw your young protege, young Dan Cameron, lose in Kentucky, and every other Republican won by at least 700,000 votes, some almost 800,000, while young Dan got about 620,000 votes, meaning what? Even the white nastiness will not vote for a black person. Your audition for vice president has failed. That was, an, that, that was a painful thing to watch last night, although I must admit the food fight between Ramaswamy and uh, Nehandra Haley was kind of interesting. Tim Scott is an embarrassment. And he's reached his ceiling, and he should probably be quiet now and take his actress, white woman, girlfriend back to where <laughs> she came from. And, and, and take... I should stop. I should really stop because y'all get me in trouble. I, I have no problem with interracial marriages, and uh, I don't, uh, and even interracial relationships. I don't know that Tim Scott is in one, but he should stop. He should just stop. Stop, Tim. Stop, brother. Just stop. Well, you know, well, Daryl Cameron has a white wife, so maybe casting a white very, wife very, wasn't the right yeah. time. He should have waited for the poll results, to, the election results to come out before he made his final selection, before he gave that final rose out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Tim Scott, I don't know about that central casting choice. I mm -hmm. think it's interesting that he spent the last many months allowing people to think he was gay as opposed to just coming out with his white woman. If he's been with her for a year, he should have came out with her right away. That way, all you could have put all the other stuff to rest. But, you know, Lauren, um, what do you think about Tim's performance and the unveiling of his Christian girlfriend last night? Is that <laughs> bigger a bigger deal than anything that he had to say or what? Come on, y'all. Why can't y'all let Timmy be Timmy? Why, why, can't, why do y'all mess with him? <laughs> I don't know uh, what to make of the girlfriend thing. I don't know why there couldn't have been a straight answer. There's any one of a number of answers that you could have had, uh, which could have just been, I'm just not in a relationship right now. Like, right. Who cares? Like, but he made a bigger deal about it by being uneasy about it. 
And then it, it just is like, wait, wait a minute. And of course, the donors are uneasy because they want to see a straight male up there. Let's right. just be real. Right. So they were they were trying to investigate to figure out, okay, is he gay? What is going on here? Uh, but maybe nothing is going on. But Tim Scott is just an uneasy character. And the reason he's an uneasy character, of course, is because he is this black avatar for white conservatives that they need to prop up when they need to say something and it has to, the message has to go through him. You know, uh, of course, that is not something unique to the Republican Party, but in a party where there's not that many black folks, you know, these sort of Cameron, Tim Scott figures become very valuable with regard to messaging. Uh, but it is particularly um, ridiculous in the age that we live in with Donald Trump around and race riots in Charlottesville and all sorts of other racial t tension brought on by Donald Trump that you have a black U.S. senator running for president and never mentioning any of this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Christian values, is he kidding? What what in, what about Christian values allows you to vote against people's health care? Mm. Uh, mm. What about Christian values allows you to vote against poor people and poverty programs and the child tax credits and all these things that uh, you would think, you know, uh, Christian values would indicate? So it was interesting that he brought that up uh, because, mm. really, dude, are you kidding me? You where is that me? where is that reflected in your policy? So the problem with Tim Scott is that he likes to talk in platitudes, he likes to talk in talking points and generalities. And once you get into specificity, which you ultimately have to get into when you're running for president, he's flat cold busted. It's as simple as that. He got flat cold busted in the diner with some dude that just said to him, look, I've never <laughs> seen you stand up to Donald Trump. I mean, that was a real simple question. He got ticked off because he's not used to pushback. And yeah. People who are not used to pushback, who don't take questions in the hallway at the U.S. Capitol, can't handle running for president of the United States. So that's the problem generally with Tim Scott. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that nice little down-home Christian man went right out the window. He had a little temper on him. But, <laughs> you know, I, I do think it's interesting to, to Dr. Carr's point earlier how they're not going to love you. I remember when all this discussion around his girlfriend or his spouse or whatever came up, he said it was like 1963 all over again. They can't call him black, so they talk about his relationship. So now I guess... You can put that to bed. Uh, <laughs> Teresa, do you think, though, that Tim Scott is what's going to bring the blacks over to the Republican Party as he's claiming there's a surge of support? I do not. Um, I think we had a better chance with Kanye West. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, uh, every time I look at um, Senator Scott's, uh, you know, uh, earlier videos when it's like from cotton fields to Congress and he's on the farm in the background, <laughs> he's like, this is where I was from. I'm just like looking at your age, like, no, you were not. But, right. Um, you know, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I, I think he's living, you know, in this delusion um, because you are the only African-American in this race that um, African-Americans are just ultimately going to support you. Um, and I think, again, that's just a delusion and weird political consulting that is taking place. When you haven't made those type of investments that really hit the home and the hearts of people um, that look like you, and every time we see you, you're standing behind something negative or something extreme that goes against the values, and then you want to stand today and then, one, try to use your pastoral voice um, in order to figure out, you know, maybe this, if it were for um, Senator Warnock, maybe it'll work for me. Um, <laughs> it, it, or Justin bad. Pearson, or is it Justin Jones? Which one of them has a little pastor voice? <laughs> Justin <Yeah>. Pearson. Okay, <laughs> Pearson. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tracy, were you done? <laughs> I just I had... I think we got the message. Yeah, I, I think we got it. You okay, know, okay. Senator, <laughs> Senator Scott is uh, just trying on a whole bunch of levels to just figure out the best way, because he doesn't know where his base is. His yeah. base is, you know, um, conservative white women who, you know, want to ban books um, <laughs> and history, you know? And then we have um, Senator Haley, who is now all of a sudden for abortion rights, you know? Ooh, her entire that. That. Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch going on that I think we just need to, again, with these folks who have been in public office and in the public sphere for quite some time, is that we take a look at their records. And so it's almost like we got to do a record check yeah. for those, you know, 
want to run for, you know, this seat that, you know, really determines, uh, you know, where dollars are spent, you know, our livelihood, our protections, our freedoms, and really see who's really putting on the performance or who's really to do, um, right. going to do the job for the American people.